welcome to Doll Doc. Today I'm creating a special doll to celebrate Valentine's Day. I always start by soaking the head in hot water to soften the vinyl, then gently with a towel tug it off, making sure not to damage the neck peg. With a pair of tweezers, I remove the hair and glue from inside the head. Then I remove the factory paint with pure acetone. Now on to the wig cap. I recommend using a stretchy fabric for the wig cap. Here I used a piece of pantyhose. Then I brush on a good layer of glue. Once the glue is dry, I add on another layer. I did about five layers in total. I wanted this wig to have romantic natural waves. For wavy wefts, take a thicker yarn and unravel the strands. Lightly comb through them and instead of straining them, just leave as is. I tried not to brush too much because I didn't want to stretch the waves out. I'll be making a tutorial soon on the many different wefts that can be made from yarn. I sculpted her shoes out of epoxy sculpt. I found that all the monster high shoes I had were just too chunky for this look. Be careful when removing the shoes. One of them ended up cracking, but I was able to repair it. Tiny rasps really help sculpt down your shoes. For the heels, I made two snakes of epoxy and let them harden. Then I sanded them down to the length I needed and attached them to the shoe with more epoxy sculpt. I wanted to add a little bit of design to the heels, so I sculpted a cute squiggle that makes a complete heart when you put the heels together. Once the epoxy cured, I painted them a light pink. I also glued crystals onto the outlines of the hearts. With thin wire and tiny beads, you can make some jewelry for your dolls. I made this necklace and with E600 glued a tiny red crystal onto the end. Now what is she gonna wear? I went with this swimsuit since it already had a sweetheart neckline. Make sure to deconstruct the swimsuit carefully with a tiny seam ripper. Then I created patterns and cut them out of my satin. I do not recommend using a pin to trace out the patterns on your clothes. I'm self-taught and this is one lesson I learned I will not be doing in the future. You'll see why later, but luckily this oops didn't show through once the clothes were sewn. This piece of clothing came from a Descendant doll. Descendant dolls are wider in the waist than Monster High. 
I was adding an elastic band to her waistline anyway, so I wasn't too worried about this. I actually wanted the gathered look. With the satin, I added some fray check, and as you can see here, it caused the ink from the pen to bleed some. I got super lucky that it didn't go too far into the seam allowance, so it didn't show up on the outside of the clothes. Sew together your pieces, right sides facing in. I sewed a little opening to put an elastic string through so the fabric would gather. The skirt I designed for her had multiple layers and I found this lace that worked perfect. Make sure to also sew the back of your skirt closed. For lace and satin, I used the tiniest stitch I could to make sure that it wouldn't come apart. Also, I found sewing on paper helps with tiny clothes like this. For the bottom of the skirt, I hand stitched on some trim. I also use the same trim on the back of her bodice piece where the snaps are going to go. For the neckline, I went back to hand stitching so I could have control over the curves a little better. And then I hand stitched tightly the very middle to bring back that sweetheart shape. I love this trim. I stitched it with some elastic thread to make little caps for her sleeves. Oh, Chiffon, my nemesis. This fabric was extremely hard to keep still while cutting, but I ended up getting the right shape and hand stitched it to the front of the bodice. I wanted this to almost be like a flowy cape type thing. I don't know exactly what you would call it. I think it turned out super cute. Lastly, sew on some snaps. I ended up also making her some little chiffon sleeves. Buff, buff, buff your body, take away the shine. First round of blushing on the body and head, I used some greens in it to neutralize the pink. This might look super weird in the beginning, but I promise you it evens out and looks great. I ended up adding some soft skin tones to take out a little bit of the yellow from the body. Adding some blushing to the body can really make your joints pop and look lifelike. Not gonna lie, when I first added the green to the face, I was a tiny bit scared. But I just buffed it in until it started to look a lot better. <laughs> With 
With the same skin tones I used on the body, I also applied to the face to take out some of that yellow green. We don't want her looking like a Valentine's alien. <laughs> Instead of using a brown pencil this time to sketch on the eyes, I went with a nice light pink. Then with soft pastels, I began to Brighten up the highlights, darken the contours, just giving her face more dimension. I like building up the colors in layers, not trying to force them on too hard. Applying the pencil too hard can actually scratch your sealant and not give you a smooth look. For her iris colors, I went with brown this time. I thought it worked really nice with the pink. It gave me that chocolate strawberry vibe, which is great for Valentine's Day. Since her lips were going to be soft, I wanted to define them a little bit with a touch of lip liner.
with light strokes add on your eyelashes. I try to get my pencils as sharp as possible for this and I hold my breath that I don't slip and screw up the entire face. Don't worry, if you do slip though, it's not the end of the world because if you've been sealing between each layers, you can easily, with a little bit of water, wipe off your mistake and start again. I never can seem to get the pupils as dark as I want them with just pencils so I add on darker pupils with some acrylics and then add the reflections to her eyes with a very thin brush. If you can't find a thin thin brush just make your own by cutting off some of the bristles. Since it is Valentine's Day, I decided to add little hearts to her reflections, just to give her an extra touch of cuteness. For her hairstyle, I tied back the front sides with a tiny bow. This gave the hairpins I'm going to add something to hold on to. When I was in high school, a guy actually made me a metal rose. So this gave me an idea for her hairpins. I took some more of the little crystals that I added to her necklace and shoes and some floral wire and made these little flower buds to stick in her hair.
also decided she needed a little bit of ear bling. Add gloss to the eyes and lips, reassemble the head onto the body, and she's done! Here is our cute and romantic Valentine's girl. I love the soft pink with the touches of bright red. She's just so adorable. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new or haven't already, please subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bells. Thanks for watching and have a happy Valentine's Day.